Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of Books Up Close. If you are new to the channel, my name is Chris Lloyd. I'm a senior lecturer in English Literature at the University of Hertfordshire in the UK. And this channel is my way of sharing book reviews with you, as well as telling you about other things that I'm reading and watching and consuming. So if you've read any of the books that I'm talking about, please do comment below, tell me what you think, tell me if you agree or disagree, and share the books that you're reading at the moment. For this episode, we will be talking about Leila Slimani's non-fiction book, Sex and Lies. So this book came out in 2017 in French, and then was translated by Sophie Lewis and published by Faber in 2020. So Slimani is a Franco-Moroccan author, currently lives in Paris. She's also a diplomat. Um, she's written non-fiction. She's written two novels with a third one on the way, as well as numerous other kinds of writing. Her first novel, Adele, was a very kind of harsh and interesting look at sexual addiction. Her second book, translated over here as Lullaby, in the US is called The Perfect Nanny, but in France it's called La Chanson Douce. This book won the Prix Goncourt, which is one of the kind of biggest literary prizes in France. And there's a really interesting story about a white nanny who works for this couple living in Paris. She looks after the two kids, but in the first chapter, we find out that the two children are killed. And then the whole book kind of rewinds and kind of shows us how we get to that point. But it's far more complex and ambiguous than that sound. It's not kind of a simple crime novel, but it's a really interesting study in power and gender and motherhood. It's a really, really good book. I would suggest you read it. So Sex and Lies is a slim non-fiction book about sexual politics in Morocco. Now in the book, Slimani talks to a number of people in Morocco, a number of women, most of whom are straight, one or two of whom are queer, all of whom are cis, but we get a range of women's voices that talk about the role sex plays in their lives, how they are seen as women, how they are treated. So the book really thinks about how sex in Morocco is policed so that sex outside of marriage, sex work, homosexuality, all of these things are criminalized in the country. And what we see really is the way that kind of women's lives in particular are circumscribed and limited and pressured by this kind of conservative Arab culture. So what Slimani does in the book is not just suggest that the sexual acts, feelings, practices are just kind of absent in the country, but rather they're just not spoken about. They're kind of driven underground as it were. So that one of the kind of key messages of Morocco that she says is do what you wish, but never tell about it. So one of the aims of Slimani's books is to shine a light on these stories so that, the, that they are told. So the book is kind of driven by this tension between what actually happens in the society and what's not allowed, what's not spoken about. So each chapter is a very kind of short little section whereby Slimani meets a particular woman in Morocco and kind of m changes their names. And Slimani's voice and the women's voices become almost kind of merged. So in regular, text, you have Slimani's kind of introduction, her thoughts, and then in italics we get the women's voices. So Slimani says about the book that she wanted to render the speech directly, though this isn't a kind of sociological study, she's not trying to draw any conclusions here, but rather is a way of um, examining and thinking about women's lives and just kind of putting them on the page, as it were. But one of the interesting things to me is that rather than using speech marks and kind of showing that as direct speech, she rather embeds that speech in her own prose, just differentiating it with the italic. And what that does is it kind of blurs the voices together in some ways, that we actually get this kind of tapestry of voices, which I think is quite an interesting decision. It also stops it being from too academic or kind of detached, but rather we're really focusing on the idea of voice. So that we hear Slamani's voice, then we hear these other women's voices, and we get to hear the kind of resonances of their speech, the kind of language they use, where they come from. In general, I think the book is really engrossing, really engaging. You'll read each chapter very quickly and then move on to the next one. And if there's any kind of critique of the book, if you can call it a critique, is that because of its shortness, you really get a sense of there's so much unsaid, there's so much more of each of these women's stories that I wanted to know. Or on the other hand, I wanted to know more women's stories. 
so as I kind of intimated, like all the women here are cis, like it would have been really interesting to see um, some trans women's stories. And obviously while being trans in Morocco is way more difficult and complicated than in other countries, there's a sense in which we need to think about which women's voices we're hearing. And obviously people are wary of coming forward and telling their stories that's clearly influencing even the women that we do read, the kind of ways in which they have to kind of cover over their identities in case this ever gets back to their families or whoever. There are a couple of stories in there about gay women who are kind of living their lives kind of in secret, but a bit more about the kind of LGBTQ context in Morocco would have been quite interesting, I think, um, for some money to flesh out. But overall, what I want to suggest is that this book is really interesting in showing us not just the ways in which these women's lives are kind of limited and curtailed, but rather the kind of expressive, complex, rich lives that women are leading in places like Morocco, or more broadly in kind of conservative cultures around the world. So I think it's best to think of this book not as simply a study of how women can't express their sexuality, but rather how women express their sexuality in more nuanced, complex ways than society allows. And that's something that's really kind of life affirming in the book. Slimani's also really great on the kind of legal complexities in Morocco, so how certain acts are either forbidden or criminalised. And Slimani is such a kind of clear writer and writes very sharp, precise sentences that you really get to the kind of heart of the matter quite quickly. As such, I'm going to give this book four stars out of five. I think if this book were a little bit longer, if there were a few more women's voices, different voices that we heard from, that might have enriched the book even more. That's not a big flaw, of course. Like it's still a fantastic read, a really insightful book. Um, and really beautifully written. So I do suggest you all get it and let me know what you think. And if you get your hands on Slimani's other books, let me know what you think of those. So as ever, please comment underneath any thoughts you have. If you've read the book, let me know. Like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, share it with people. And if you have any other books you want me to review, let me know and I can put them into the schedule. I've got so many books to get to and review for you so I can add more to the pile. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching and see you soon.